Welcome back, folks. Now we're going to have a little bit of a chat around eye control. This is the API on the Big IP platform. And through um, some, uh, some questions that have come up through our Ask F5 knowledge base and our technical support uh, folks, there's a number of folks that are uh, maybe just starting to discover eye control and, and just starting to hear about it. And so they had some uh, basic questions around eye control and securing eye control. So we'll step through some of those uh, at this point now. Jason, I'll, I'll turn it to you for um, for walking us through some of that. Okay. Well, first, just a little a little history lesson, right? What what the heck is eye control? Uh, eye control was born out of the brain of Mr. Joe Pruitt, uh, founder of a uh, co-founder of of Dev Central, the community platform that we run on, and he built eye control originally originally with a Corba interface, and then transitioned to SOAP, which is still supported on the platform. By the way, you can use uh, you know traditional eye control and make SOAP calls. Uh, obviously, a lot of the newer uh, interfaces in the last several years are, aren't available. Uh, there's not parity between SOAP and REST, uh, but there's some things in in SOAP that uh, that that weren't moved forward into into REST uh, for whatever reason. Some of them were security reasons. Some of them were were uh, you know just product development decisions and and all that. But you can still use the SOAP interface, and so that is uh, an interface that that you need to be aware if you expose management. You know, interface. If you expose port 443, you, people can talk to the SOAP interface. Uh, whether you uh, decide to use it or not, it, it's exposed. Uh, the same is true of of eye control REST and and with the newer things like uh, I, I control LX. It uses the REST interface, but a slightly different worker on the REST Java D side. Uh, but all those things are exposed uh, on the big IP if you have port 443 available either on a self IP. Or you know, which is default on the uh, on the management interface, and so when when people ask the question, uh, which is the next question, how do I know if if I'm using eye control REST? Uh, the reality is, if you have a, an exposed interface, your it, it's it's available. It doesn't mean anybody's using it, but it is available. And so if you have that uh, four four three exposed on a self IP, just know that people can talk to that to that service. And uh, the the awesome Ask F5 team yesterday uh, released uh, K5003, uh, K50032, you can read it there, um, how to determine if, if a big IP is using eye control. Um, obviously, as I just said, just to reiterate, you're, you're, the service is available regardless of whether you're using it, but here's a way that you can actually go in and look, hey, am I using this? And so if I take one of their commands here and uh, and I'm going to stop my screen and share a different interface here real quick. Yeah, it's just not working. Just so as you know, um, run that command. I have a, a big IP that is not um, uh, that I have not configured. And when I run that command, there there's nothing that shows up. Uh, it, it returns null. And so if I were on a system that I was using all the time and the, these commands uh, returned null. Let me, let me go ahead and share that back. There we go. Uh, so if you run any of these commands, looking at uh, top uh, URIs that are you're hitting, top source IPs, top users in uh, your eye control uh, logs, then, then uh, you know, if it returns null, you're not using it even though the service is available. If it does return, it means somebody in your organization has used the uh, the eye control interface, or somebody not in your organization has used the interface. So, you know, if if those records turn up at that point, then you want to you want to turn over to a var log audit, and you want to match up your timestamps with whatever was run. And a lot of that stuff, like organizationally, people will pull stats or or look at objects. Maybe you'll use eye control rest to. Um, uh, to make configuration changes and and uh, and whatnot, so uh, those those things are are very common. Uh, what's less common is running commands like running a quick quick view. You can do that. Running a TCP dump. I I have a script uh, that I released uh, earlier this month, or actually it was back in April, uh, where you could run TCP dump from from Bash via I control rest. So there's there's benefits to to doing those things, but it's Far less common, and if you don't do it, but you see those logs, well, then maybe that's an indication of compromise in in the system. All right. So, next question is, uh, you know, 
how, how do we knowing that the service is available um, and we, we don't use it. How do we, how do we knock, how do we block that off? And th- what you want to do uh, on self IPs is if you don't need access to the GUI um, via a self IP, uh, just take that from your allowed ports, you know, do port lockdown, remove four, four, three on anything that is a through interface um, where traffic's uh, going through the box. Uh, because usually you want a separation of, of access. You want your traffic that's flowing through the box. You want to access your box on either the management port or a dedicated uh, traffic interface so that you don't have to you know, balance the needs of, of what's listing on that virtual server. Uh, the next comment is like on, even on your management interface, you know, you, you want to make sure that the only access there is from trusted systems. So maybe you have a jump box, you have a secured network region. And so in your, your DMZ, you have like, you know, isolation of purpose and and all that stuff so that not just everybody within your organization, because routing can get to your management interfaces. You want to, you want to lock that down even uh, because even though you want to trust your employees uh, in, in this era of, you know, trust, but verify really uh, you don't want to trust you, you, you lock it down, zero trust everywhere and make sure everybody has intention to be there from an authorization standpoint, but also everybody has access to be there. And so you want to lock that down. And uh, with that, uh, you can use um, in 14, and I didn't know this as I was doing research for this show, um, you don't have to have AFM in 14, uh, 14X and forward. Um, you don't have to have AFM licensed or provisioned in order to use AFM uh, access rules uh, for the management interface and, and this, uh, it kind of walks you through that. If you do have, uh, a, an earlier version, um, you know, you will have, it's, it's available for the management interface, uh, but you do have to have AFM provision for it. Uh, 14 forward. That's not the case. So if you're already at 14, great. If, and I'll say, you know, kind of with, with locking down eye control in general, um, let's see, Stephen Manthe, two minute listening. Okay. Yeah. There you go to see to see what you're allowing right now. Um, thank you for that. And uh, yeah, so beginning fourteen one, you can use the AFM rules. Uh, highly suggest you do that. And then for the management interface, uh, you can if you're on earlier versions, you can use IP tables. Uh, you know you're getting into the, uh, the Linux sysadmin weeds there. Uh, but if that's what you have, that's what you have. You can use IP tables to do that, especially for those of you who might be on 11x, uh, 12x. Uh, you know the the CVE fixes aren't they're not coming. They're not fixing those because um, maybe you're on 11x and you didn't know this, but uh, 11x was end of life last week, and uh, and 12x is end of life this week. So there's there's no fixes coming for you. And if you can't upgrade yet, uh, you know IP tables is an option for you. We'll share those resources as well and then uh yeah so we have the the overview bigger than i control uh there's an overview of securing access to the big ip system in general and so you know we'll share those as well um but you know it, it, i control is a fantastic thing i use it all the time in fact i i love it i love being able to automate and and uh you know that's kind of the future of products but you know you got to be careful with everything that you use uh, to kind of understand use cases, understand your traffic, you know, make sure you review logs on a regular basis so that as new log things, Hey, that's a, maybe you have a, uh, whether it's a Splunk or, a, um, you know, one of their competitors, um, gray log or, or whatever you have filters that are kind of tracking, Hey, I haven't seen that command before. And, and so if there's something new that comes in to a log, then you flag that and look, look for review. So there's all kinds of things that you can do on the telemetry side, not just the post um, incident side uh, to, to give you insight into kind of what's going on in your environment. Cool. Um, if anybody has any questions at this point, I know the, the chat has a lot of links in there. And uh, just as a reminder, we are going to post those into the show thread afterwards. Uh, but if you have any questions right now uh, amongst all the live folks, uh, please do let us know. Um, 
we'll try to do more of these as we talk about um, you know subjects that relate to questions that have been uh, really lively lately within the community and potentially within Ask F5 and our support as well. But please do go ahead with any questions that you might have. So yeah, this is what I was uh, mentioning with uh, uh, Peter. Um, uh, you could always use uh, a virtual server for eye control and secure it with a WAF policy. Absolutely. And that's why I was mentioning it's like if you if you want to have uh, traffic to the big IP instead of through the big IP on a traffic interface, you can definitely do that. Just dedicate it um, because in this case, yeah, secure it with a WAF policy, you're good to go. Uh, so that's a good good practice there, Peter. Very cool. Um, and if there aren't any more questions uh, at this point, what we'll say is you're always welcome to jump onto community.f5.com. Uh, check out the thread on there. Join as a member so that you can comment on the thread, ask your questions on there. Again, we have show threat, show specific threads that are in a group called Dev Central Connects. You just have to uh, go under the groups tab and locate the group, click on it. You just have to click um, uh, uh, request to join the group, and then you'll just be immediately, uh, or within a couple minutes, I think, uh, you'll be allowed access into the group. We have all of our follow-up notes on there all the stuff that the research team is posting uh, will be added to there uh, as well. If you have any other uh, things that you want to see on these shows as well, just let us know and we will uh, try to accommodate or, or plan shows around uh, based on feedback as well. Um, that's about, that might be it for today, Jason. Do you have anything else to mention? I don't other than, uh, you know, uh, good on you, Al, for, patching as we're as as we're doing this thing we've got live patching going on so that's uh that's fantastic oh, we got another one in there can uh from ron can sys httpd uh allow be effectively used uh, to block um okay in the cve there is a mitigation if you if you you know can't get to patching right away let me see if i can find that real quick uh yeah so in the sys httpd they have the the mitigation for that uh, it, it gives you the, the fix action in the HTTP configuration on big IP. If you're not, if you're not able to patch right away, there is a mitigation that'll block it. Um, and so you can, you can do that. Uh, best, best recommendation here is to patch, but if you can't get there, you know, today or whatever, get, get that, at least get the mitigation done. Um, and I, I think some of these things, um, and I, I'm not seeing it right here. Some of these things sync from box to box, some of them don't. And so you just make sure if you sync, go go check your HDB config on the other box. You might have to do it to each device. Um, I'm not really sure if that property does, uh, but since it's a TMSH property, it should, uh, but you know, just, just verify. Yeah, I think you're you got it. Okay, there you go. Part here, right, Jason? Yep. And that is in the K article. So this K article is K2360536. We'll drop that into the show notes as well. And maybe one thing we'll uh, commit to, Jason, is um, we'll make a promise on behalf of the CERT team, perhaps. But in the show thread, if you're asking questions inside of that thread and it's something that we need to divert over to CERT, we'll be able to follow up with them and get them. They're on Dev Central. We'll be able to uh, to get them to uh, answer some of that stuff uh, on there where it makes sense as well. Yep, for sure. And I do have a question here from Al. Uh, wanted to know: all our F5s are an internal perimeter network, not exposed to the internet. So are they still impacted from the internet? The answer would be no. From internal, you know, if you have somebody in your network, uh, then you know, yes, they're they're still ex you know they're still impacted. That that vulnerability is still there. So if somebody gets into your network and the bad actors are there, you're still vulnerable from their traffic. Um, you might still be vulnerable from, you know, employees that are wanting to test, Hey, is this, is this thing real? And, you know, you, you have those that are like, Oh, I want to test that. And I don't have a test box. And it's like, Oh, nope, yep. That works. So not saying I've ever done anything like that. Yeah. Um, but you know, the, the reality is people are curious. And so it is, you know, it is, uh, it is vulnerable even if it's internal. So, you know, it, but you know your network. And so uh, you, you have to make those, those business decisions. The, the technical, you know, the technical reality is, yes, it is impacted, even if P5 
people can't necessarily uh, get to that from the outside. They can still get to it from the inside. Another comment here from Peter. It's sad there's no option for users, uh, only eye control access. So the same user can't uh, access GUI or SSH. Yeah, uh, you know, ports exposed. And, and uh, you know, I, I suppose that, uh, you know, that could be, you know, uh, built into something like, you know, your your Apache, Tomcat, you know, whatever, whatever there is, is listing. But, you know, the more complexity you have, the more vulnerabilities that that uh, might arise from uh, rules gone wrong, right? So 